Hello, this is my yellow plectrum. It absorbs all the colours of the spectrum except yellow, which it reflects. Fascinating, huh? I get excited by light, you get less of it at night, but what you do get I find exciting. I get excited by light, especially when I think that white is a mixture of indigo, violet, red, yellow, orange, blue and green. You wouldn't get white if you mixed all that lot in a ball of plasticine. I am delighted by light refractions where the action is. got a laser gun. There's only one thing you really need to know. Light travels in straight lines. A wall of pencils in a spotlight casts a sharp shadow. Light is interesting. You can see where it isn't, and you can see where it is. Do these rays prove that light travels in straight lines? Rays of sunlight seem to arrive in straight lines. Sunlight was falling in straight lines on Baghdad 1100 years ago, when the Arab mathematician Al-Kindi was trying to do some geometry. But he was dazzled by the sun's rays coming in through a high window. Then his work was interrupted by a dark shadow that he could not brush away. He wondered what on earth was going on. Then suddenly he saw the light. The sunshine must be coming down in straight lines. He realized that he could draw a diagram of where the rays of sunlight were shining. And that he could even show how the shadows were made. Al Kindi was the first person ever to draw a ray diagram like this. When there's no light, you can't see a thing. But when there is light, you can see anything that reflects the light. Black things don't. We see most things only by reflected light. This is a poster of the famous scientist Albert Einstein. There's a barrier between the observer and the lamp. So he can't see the lamp. Can you explain how he can see the poster? Light streams from the lamp to the poster and then is reflected back to the observer. Nothing comes out of his eye. When the light arrives, it streams in through the pupil. So it's the reflected light that allows him to see Einstein. What happens inside the eye? When the eyelid opens, light pours in. Suppose a letter T appears in front. 
light from the tea forms an image on the nerves at the back. The nerves send a message back to the brain. And the brain works out that there must be a letter T out there. Cameras work rather like eyes. The camera's job is to collect light from the object and make an image at the back. The photographer opens the iris to let in enough light to give a bright image of the candle. Then he moves the lens to bring the light to a focus. Why do you think the image of the candle is upside down? Modern cameras are more sophisticated and they have a lot of automatic controls, just like your eye. How do you think your eye focuses the light to make a sharp image? So how do people see? Here's a model. This is the lens at the front of your eye. Remember, we see most things by reflected light. Light from the lamp falls on the hand and is reflected. Some goes through the lens to form an image on the screen at the back, which is like the retina of your eye. Some eyes don't work as well as they should. With a fixed object, a normal eye forms a sharp image. But if your eyeball is a bit short, the lens won't be able to form a sharp image unless you add a bit of extra lens power. I needed the assistance of glasses and I was glad of their existence. I couldn't see the destinations on the buses in the distance. I couldn't see the street signs and places to eat signs down at the market. I couldn't see the price of the cucumber on the top of the rack. Down at the football ground, I couldn't see the number on the soccer player's back. Back home, the dog looked more blurry than furry. At school, well, I could see the blackboard, but I couldn't see the writing. And at night, Walking down the lane, the lights that lit the street, they twinkled like stars and they were blurry as well, but I liked that bit. You can't use just any lens. These metal frame specs make the image even worse. You have to use the right correcting lens. Suppose your eyeball's too long. The black frames are no good. Now, they make the image worse. You need a different correcting lens to make the image sharp. Now the metal frames have the right lenses. How do you find out what corrective lenses you need? 
One thing the optician does is look at your eyeball. Here's a model of an eyeball with a beam of light that needs to be brought to a focus. Some people are short-sighted, some are long-sighted. Let's see what that means. First, the normal eye. This brings the light beam to a focus at the back, right on the retina. For short-sighted people, distant objects always look blurred. That's because the point of focus is not on the retina, but inside the eyeball. What sort of correcting lens do you think will solve the problem of short sight? For short sight, you need a divergent lens, one that makes things look smaller. I sat in the optician's chair and staring at the chart. I couldn't see the letter T. I couldn't even start to see it. And my optician then explained to me the problem. Right. The light goes in your eyeball whose cornea makes it bend and exactly on the retina is where the light should end up. But your lens is insufficient and it messes up the stunt and instead of on the retina, the light ends up in front. So my eye needs a corrective lens through which the light beam passes. I see, it's a case of my myopia. Mm. And one more for your glasses. What about long sight? What sort of corrective lens do you think would solve this problem? Can you see the big letter E over there, Mr. Scott? Yes. And can you see any of these smaller letters? Yes, it's E N G L. It's okay. quite blurred. What about with the other eye? Just a bit better. She wants to find out what corrective lenses he needs, so she puts on a pair of trial frames. And tries out her first guess. Right. Now, um, can you see the middle line of letters there? Yes, it's D-A-O-F. And what about the bottom line? E-G-D-N. Then, she uses trial and improvement to find the best possible power for his eyes. Okay, fine. And what about this time? Very similar. Okay, fine. Suppose you had a load of specs destined for the third world. How would you measure the power of the lenses? Well, look at the air. Stronger they are, aren't they? Okay. If you look through them and pull them back and forward, the next part and go up bigger and smaller. What would you look for? If you look down there, you can see that right in there. If you bring it right close, it goes all blurred. Yes. Just bring more powerful ones to make it bigger. This group wrote a word on a piece of paper, held each lens a fixed distance both from the word and from the eye, and measured the width of the image. Lens power is measured in diopters. Negative numbers for divergent lenses, positive for convergent lenses. How would you use these standard lenses to measure the power of any other pair of specs?
they chose to draw a calibration graph of image size against lens power. Plus eight. So they could measure the size of the image and read off the power of the lens. 2.6 is plus six. Six diopters. What connection do you think there might be between the power of a lens and its thickness? Left and middle is um, 2.7. 2 2.7? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All spectacle lenses start life roughly the same. The lens grinder takes off just enough plastic or glass from the back to make them the right shape to correct your vision. So, what sorts of images do different lenses form? And why do some lenses make images that are smaller than the object, while others make images that are magnified? When the grinding is finished, the lenses have to be cut to the right shape to fit in the frames. Some frames are thick, some frames are thin. All of them keep your lenses in, unless you haven't got any. Who has the most powerful specs in your class? I am glad to wear glasses Just like my dad I've got some glasses And I've got a notion of a nation Where greener grass is Where everybody's trying on everybody else's glasses where nobody cares about the colour of your skin or the colour of the case that your glasses are kept in.